What is up YouTube, XX Solutions here and today I'm bringing you another video and this is on how to set up your own VPN server. So a lot of you out there know what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network and it basically allows you to connect to the network and basically make sure that everything's encrypted, all of your data is encrypted so if you go out and about and you go in maybe a free Wi-Fi or something like that and people are sniffing packets in the network and you know sniffing on the network then they can see all the traffic and all of the data and most of it is in plain text and can steal your passwords that's not good and that's where a VPN comes in obviously that's not you know the main reason why you'd want to do this with my ISP I am with Virgin Media in the UK if you don't know what that is it's basically a really good ISP but unfortunately we have static IP addresses so there are other companies in the UK and they are relatively good but they're not as great speeds as Virgin Media so that is very useful for having a VPN because if you get hit offline and get DDoSed a lot with the same IP address if someone you know takes note of that and they want to DDoS you whenever they want, they can do so because they have your IP address. But if you're constantly on a virtual private network, aka VPN, then your IP address is actually going to be spoofed to a different location and going to be completely different. So it's very useful. Obviously, if they manage to DDoS a VPN, which is doable, then you can just come off of it and you know your internet will be fine. It doesn't affect your internet whatsoever, and hopefully they will stop the DDoS attack and you can hop back on the VPN. Obviously, there's nothing stopping you from having more than one VPN server, so obviously. Obviously you can do this as many times as you want. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. So in the description below, I will leave everything there for you to download. You will need WinSCP, which is a great FTP client, it has built-in PuTTY, it's very useful for transferring files. You can use any other FTP client of your choice. I like WinSCP, I was going to use FileZilla, but WinSCP just seems to work fine for me, so that's completely fine. OpenVPN, so this will be an OpenVPN VPN, and it's very stable, there is no DNS leaks, and I'll show you. It's very very easy to set up so if you're you know a noob at Linux and all of that stuff then do not worry I'm a noob at Linux and I'm not really great with the commands and stuff but literally I will leave all of the commands in the description below so you can just copy and paste this into your putty and that will pretty much be it and obviously we need putty as well as I was just saying so putty allows you to obviously connect to your virtual private server so you can use command line and stuff like that so if you haven't already done this then it's really really simple if you have then you'll know what putty is and all of these programs so I'm going to go ahead and open my web browser so here we have two very cheap servers now I'm using OVH OVH is quite well known they're not the greatest in the world but they are very very cheap and and quite reliable. I did have to wait about 12 hours for my VPS to be sent through via email, you know, all of the information, username, password, IP address, and all of that jazz, but it may vary and it might just be because they're on a different time zone or something like that. So again, £2.49 per month, very cheap. You can convert that into dollars if you're American. You get two gigabytes of RAM, which is great because you don't actually need a lot of RAM for the VPN server. We're mainly using transfer speeds and bandwidth. So this has 100 download speed and 100 upload speed and it's more than enough so it's very very capable but if you would like to upgrade you can obviously go for a different package and the other company is digital ocean i have used them before they're very really great service i believe they come through instantly which is another great feature again five dollars a month which is probably cheaper or maybe the same price as ovh you get half a gig ram which is completely fine because again we do not need ram unless you're using it for something else uh, one core processor 20 gig of ssd storage and one terabyte transfer which is great because obviously the transfer the more the better but we're not going to be using one terabytes obviously and the bandwidth i believe is very very good with digital ocean as well there may be some other companies out there i haven't done enough research if i do find any more that are very cheap like this then i will link them in the description below so once you have your virtual private server make sure that you're going to be installing the operating system as a debian i am using debian 7 wheezy 64-bit version but you can use any version of debian debian is very stable there's no there's not that many vulnerabilities I believe and I've just heard a lot of great things about Debian. I've been using Debian for ages and it seems to work fine for this tutorial. You can use CentOS and some other uh, Linux distros out there but I'm not entirely sure if it's the exact same procedure. So again if you're going to buy it make sure that when you choose your Linux server to install Debian. So once we have the VPS details we're going to go ahead and open PuTTY and we're going to put the host name in here which is either the host name or your actual IP address. So I'm going to put my IP address in here and hit open. Open. There will be a warning on the first boot. This will go away once you hit yes. Obviously, this is a first time thing, so just go ahead and press yes. It's for security measures. We're going to type in the username, which is root, and the password that is provided and is generated. So if you right click, that will actually paste 
and you can paste in there if you don't know how to do that already. So now we're in the core of the VPS. We're gonna need to install and update a few things. So it's very simple. So the first command you're going to want to do is apt get update. And that will just basically update all of the packages and make sure everything's up to date because we do not want to run this on an outdated server. We're going to apt get upgrade. And again, that will just upgrade. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. That will basically upgrade your Debian or your VPS and all of the packages. So just to make sure that again, they're all upgraded to the latest version and it's not running on an older version of Debian. This may take a long time depending on where your server is located. My server I forgot to mention is located in France. I live in the UK in London so France is not that far away from me so me to France, me to this server is really really quick you know the speeds are great so when you do choose your virtual private server make sure to choose someone that's relatively close to you because you'll get better speeds that way. Okay, so as you can see, we have done that now. I'm just going to clear this because it looks a mess. And I'm gonna right click and paste this command. Again, this will be in the description below. I'm only pasting this in because it's a very long command and I don't really feel like typing that out. So go ahead and hit enter. And that will basically install OpenVPN script. Someone made this script, very great. Props to whoever made this. I think it's called Road Warrior, I'm not entirely sure. And now we will ask you for your IP address. Now obviously this is the IP address of your server. As you can see up here in Putty, actually tells you it but if it doesn't put it in for you then go ahead and type it and then hit enter for the port number I'm just gonna leave this default that's completely fine you can change that if you wish the DNS I'm gonna use number one which is the current system that's completely fine again if you want to change this this is obviously personal preference I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and then here we'll ask you for your client name. I'm just going to call it XCX Solutions for the purpose of this tutorial and hit enter. And then it says OK and press any key to continue. Again, pretty easy stuff, not that hard. We'll go ahead and install the OpenVPN now, and it's going to generate a key, an RSA 2048 bit long key, and a certificate, and all of that jazz. So if you see loads of dots and pluses on the screen, that's perfectly normal. It may take a while because it's quite a big key, but trust me, it's more secure that way. So just leave it and and it may take a while. Okay guys, so now you can see the client config is available and is completed. So we can go ahead and minimize putty and open up our FTP client. As you can see, I've already filled out the information, but you would put your IP, your username and password in there and hit login. Again, like putty on first time, you will see this. Just go ahead and click update. That is perfectly normal. It's just a security feature. So now you can see we are in the root directory. If I go back, you have all of the other stuff. If you see this, then be sure to go in the root folder. That will take you inside here and you'll see the OVPN. We've named it XX Solutions. If you've named this something different, then obviously it will be whatever you've named. So now what we're going to do is drag and drop this into our desktop. So make sure you choose desktop and put that there. As you can see here, we now have it on the desktop, so we do not need the FTP client anymore. We're going to right click on OpenVPN GUI, open its file location and click back. So now we're in the directory of OVPN. Go inside the config folder and you'll see a readme file. We don't necessarily need that, you can delete that if you wish, but go ahead and drag your OVPN file inside here like so. Now that is quite literally it. We can close this and open VPN GUI. As you can see, it creates a task tray icon down here. If you go ahead and double click on this, it will automatically connect. Right now it's yellow because it's trying to authenticate and connect to the server. Looks like it's going to connect and as you can see here, XX Solutions is now connected. The assigned IP is a local IP address, do not worry, it will spoof your IP address to something different. And as you can see, it's green and we are connected. So if I go ahead and open my web browser and go to whatismyipaddress.com, you can see it's the exact same IP address as my virtual private server. As you can see up here in Putty, it's exactly the same. It's OVH, obviously that's the company I went with, and the country is France. And all of your data is being transmitted through the virtual private network, so it's all encrypted it's all safe and there are no DNS leaks as well. So this is very secure. The speeds are really great as well. And obviously that depends on which virtual private server you go with. So now if someone was to scan through my IP address, whether it's a game or an IP Skype resolver or something like that, then they would see this IP address and not your main IP address. So obviously I don't live in France and this is not my core IP address. My main IP address is static. So I do like going on a VPN quite a lot. And this is just a really, really cheap way on how to set up your own VPN server. Now obviously you own this which means you can add as many clients as you want. So if you go back to putty we can go ahead and do the command bash 
openvpn if i spell it right install.sh and hit enter and i spelt bash wrong so let's go ahead and change that and as you can see it says looks like openvpn is already installed which it is press one to add a new user so we're going to go ahead and press one and then like before it will ask you for a client name so for example i'm just going to call this android and it will generate a 2048-bit rsf private key again and the client android has been added so if we minimize this minimize that go back into our ftp client and refresh you can see we have two clients now xx solutions and android obviously the one i just created now it's not ideal you keep these inside of the root directory so if you do want to move these you can move these wherever you like but for this tutorial i'm just going to keep it in root for now all you do is send them this file and they would do the exact same thing by installing openvpn gui and putting it in their config folder and obviously connect like we just did now if you do see this little icon down here flicking on and off it's just because i'm on a virtual machine it's not disconnecting it's very stable i've tested this for 10 hours straight i left my computer on and it was stable as hell so i do highly recommend ovh if you're going to choose a vps between your friends so if you do want to see the status of your vpn you can go ahead and type in service open vpn and then status and that will basically say the vpn server is running you can stop the server at any time Time by typing in service open VPN and then stop that will stop the server and it should disconnect here in a second if not then if you go back to the internet and I refresh this page you can see it's struggling to refresh because the server is now down and is not being connected again if you want to restart it you can type in restart or if you just want to start the server again you just type in start and that will start the virtual private network and as you can see if I refresh the page it's now starting to load and is assigned me the IP address again. So you can also do this on any device. OpenVPN is open source. It's also compatible with iOS, Mac, Android, Windows and Linux. So if you do want to see a tutorial on how to install this VPN running on your Android device, then be sure to hit that like button and comment below because it's very great using your Android device in public with this VPN and it's very stable indeed. So be sure to hit that like button. I hope I've helped you in a way. Comment, rate, subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.